Good day and welcome to the Newsmax Daily for Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, the 100th day of the year. It's the second of five Tuesdays this month and National Library Workers Day. Founded by the American Library Association to recognize the important work of librarians and library support staff. So if that is you, kudos to you. Today is your day. And you probably know that this week is National Library Week. I mean, if you work in the library, you know that. The rest of us didn't really know. Today is also the final day of Ramadan, the holy Muslim season, which is significant to almost everyone because Iran has threatened to retaliate against Israel for killing members of its Revolutionary Guard in that airstrike a week ago and against the United States for supporting Israel once Ramadan Ramadan is over, as we discussed yesterday. Meanwhile, the foreign ministers of both China and Russia are meeting today in Beijing, hailing their growing bilateral relationship, something we should obviously be paying close attention to, we and a lot of other countries. And in Washington, President Biden and the First Lady welcome Prime Minister Fumio Kishida of Japan to the White House later this evening, ahead of a big sit-down summit tomorrow, where they will likely talk about China, Russia, trade, and a host of other issues, and then give comments on the meeting. Greg Kelly starts us off with comments that President Biden made yesterday while campaigning, yes, campaigning, in Wisconsin. Joe Biden is trying to ruin the country, literally ruin the country and make us something we're not. A socialist, maybe even a communist state. He doesn't have the authority, but he's doing it anyway. From day one, my administration has been committed to fixing the broken student loan system and making sure higher education is a ticket to the middle class, not a barrier. Yeah, he's all about breaking barriers, barriers to the middle, barriers at the border, barriers. He hates barriers. And from day one, I think his mission was to kind of destroy this country. All right. How many people are going to, he's going to try to buy their votes by election day, buy their votes? My administration has approved debt cancellation for 4 million Americans through various actions. And today I'm announcing new plans that would cancel student debt for millions more. In total... These plans would cancel some or all student debt for 30 million Americans. All right. In total, a zone of totality, perhaps. Uh, He does not have the authority. The Supreme Court keeps telling him, Joe, you can't do this. And he keeps doing it. Let's see here. The Supreme Court did say specifically that no authorization for the plan. There's no clear congressional authorization for such a program. Joe is acting like a dictator, a uh, autocrat, and we don't have that kind of system, at least not yet. This uh, website, by the way, is called studentaid.gov. Good luck navigating the thing. Uh, I think the same guy who came up with the Obamacare website came up with this one, so maybe we'll be able to save some money after all because no one's actually going to be able to, you know, get through all those applications. It is a big pain in the neck. But Joe's impulses here and that of his administration are communist. Comrade Joseph. Joseph, like Joseph Stalin. Joe Stalin. We spelled it the same way. This is, this is not public service. This is not... This is not even American politics. This is weird. This is straight out of uh, the manifesto. That is Greg Kelly, host of The Greg Kelly Show, weeknights at 9 o'clock Eastern on Newsmax. I just get the feeling that Greg is like that one dude that you'd love to have in your class, you know, in, in high school especially or college, right? Just such a smart but fun, unique kind of dude. This is former acting attorney general Matthew Whitaker, a University of Iowa alum who is still upset that the Hawkeyes lost the national title game on Sunday. What do you think? Is this another voter buy? You know, he's trying to pander to those young voters. He's trying to pander to those those liberal institutions all while using our taxpayer dollars. Right, exactly. He is trying to give handouts to people that he thinks are part of his coalition so that they'll show up for him in November. But remember, if Congress hasn't passed the law and the president doesn't sign it, then I don't know where this power comes to give out billions of dollars of taxpayer money. Uh, And I don't know why we're making plumbers and electricians and folks that either haven't gone to college or, or have already paid off their student loans 
pay for those folks that you know got degrees that aren't as marketable as maybe they were led to believe. And so at the end of the day, I just think this is a total uh, buy of votes, and I think it shouldn't get away with it. And I'm happy to see people like Chris Kobach, the attorney general in Kansas, and, and other state attorneys general push back on this and try to prevent the president from doing this. Former acting attorney general and senior fellow at the American Cornerstone Institute, Matthew Whitaker. And he mentioned the attorney general of Kansas, right? This is Kansas Senator Roger Marshall on American Agenda with Bob Brooks and Katrina Zish. Senator, real quick while we got you, I want to get your take on Joe Biden's announcement today on student loans. Uh, I'm reading here from his administration, maybe 23 million seeing their full balance growth canceled. He is going to cancel so much debt on the burden on the backs of the American taxpayer here. Your initial thoughts on this announcement. Well, well, first of all, it's unconstitutional. He's totally ignoring what the Supreme Court's already told him about. But this is why working Americans are leaving the Democrat uh, Party. Most Americans don't have a student loan. Some people chose to work through college. Some people chose to uh, do not go to college, went right to the work workforce. So those folks are upset about this. Look, the president does not have the authority to write checks. That's the job of, of Congress is to authorize funding. This is unconstitutional, but probably even bigger than that, though, this is is one more reason that those union workers are, are leaving the Democrat Party in groves and they're coming over the working class party, the Republicans. Kansas Senator Roger Marshall. There are some rules, of course, and requirements that go into this thing for those that hope to have their student debt erased. They have to go to a special website, as Greg Kelly mentioned, submit a bunch of forms. You know, it's not just waving a magic wand, right? You have to meet some requirements and do some work. But Senator Marshall makes a valid point or several valid points. How do you feel? We've talked about this before, obviously, with the other times that uh, Biden has announced debt relief. But how do you feel if you skipped college, maybe, because you didn't want to incur the debt? You got a union job, like he mentioned. Or if you worked through college, sacrificed after college to pay your debt. You do know that during the pandemic or because of the pandemic, right, student loan payments were suspended. So most people already had two years or three years of not making payments. How do you feel if you worked your tail off and sacrificed to pay for your kid or kids' colleges? How about they say if you paid off a college loan in the last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, if you were responsible and did whatever it took to get your loans paid, you're going to get a $2,000 refund or $3,000 refund or whatever. Why are the hard working responsible people never rewarded? That's my thing. That's my two cents on this whole thing. Same thing with the Obama Biden housing crisis. You remember? Don't pay your mortgage. It's okay. The bank can't throw you out. So millions of people didn't pay their mortgage, while tens of millions of people worked extra hard to make sure their mortgages got paid. Yesterday, I told you Congress returned from their Easter break. You know, Easter is on a Sunday, so most people don't even get a day off. They had two weeks off. Funding for Ukraine and impeaching Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas are two of the top items on the agenda. Senator Marshall also weighed in on that. Speaker Mike Johnson, other House Republicans, they're going to walk two articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to the Capitol to deliver them to the Senate on Wednesday. Senator, what do you think is going to happen here? How are you going to vote? How's this going to go down? Well, we can only hope that we have a trial. Right now, Chuck Schumer is so afraid of these of this uh, issue, of this open border, that he's unwilling to have this impeachment trial. His plans are to table the motion. And what Americans need to realize is just two Democrat senators could force this trial to go on. So I hope the good people out in Montana, Ohio, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, Pennsylvania, that they're watching what their Democrats uh, senators are going to do. But I'm afraid this is going to end up in, uh, in being tabled. There won't be an impeachment trial at all. Uh, Chuck Schumer does not want this on the front page of any newspaper this week. Senator, do you still think it is impactful or at least symbolic that the House at least voted to impeach Mayorkas? Does that still send a message? You know, ab absolutely. The number one concern, the number one worry of folks back home uh, in Kansas is the safety and security of their own home. We lose a Kansan every day to fentanyl poisoning. We've lost 250,000 young adults poisoned uh, by fentanyl. 
so I do think it's important that the House did their job. Uh, we would love to have the impeachment trial. We would love to, to talk about this because I think that might force Joe Biden to do something. But all the more so, elections have consequences. We should fire and Alejandro Mayorkas this week. We should fire Joe Biden in 200 days. But at least this will give it uh, some press, a little bit of coverage this week. Uh, we wish we'd have an impeachment trial, though. Again, that is Kansas Senator Roger Marshall on American Agenda. A New York appeals court judge on Monday denied Donald Trump's bid to move his hush money trial out of New York City, right? Out of Manhattan to another perhaps more friendly venue. Trump suggested that the trial be moved to Staten Island, which is the only one of New York's five boroughs that he won during both the 2016 and 2020 elections. But again, the judge denying that bid. And discussion over the former president's comments on abortion also dominating the airwaves. More from Eric Bowling and Kerry Lake. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You know, Kerry, that's... A lot of people are waiting to hear that, and frankly, that's the only answer for a conservative if you want to win an election. I I think it was great that President Trump came out and spoke about this. I've heard him speak about uh, his stance on abortion. We need to have... Uh, availability for abortion for women who've been victim of rape or incest or if the life of the mother is on the line. And I think most people, you know, don't believe in abortion right up until the moment of birth. But here's the point. We fought long and hard to make this to give the states the ability to write the laws on this issue. So we're going to have 50 different state laws and we can spend all of our time arguing about which laws are better than others. Or we can spend our time and focus on actually helping women and helping babies. You know, we need to look at why are women stepping foot in an abortion clinic? And by the way, the left is only for one choice. They say they're pro-choice. They're only for one choice. As a Republican woman myself, I want to make sure that we're giving women more than one choice. If the reason they're stepping foot in an abortion clinic is they don't feel they can afford their baby, I want to let them know there's help out there for them. If they don't feel that they have the ability to take care of that baby, I want them to know there are adoptive services. We need to be the party that gives true, real choices so that a woman in that position where she's making a tragic decision is able to have more options available to her. I'm talking about also child tax tax credits. While a woman is, is even pregnant, we should offer those. I believe that we should be offering baby bonuses and support to families so that they can grow their family, including support. Arizona Senate candidate Kerry Lake on with Eric Bowling and with some great suggestions, especially helping the grandparents, right? That in so many cases are raising their child's child. On a side note, the Supreme Court dismissed a petition from Kerry Lake and former Arizona State Representative Mark Fincham asking for a new case on voter fraud in the 2022 election based on on newly discovered evidence, but the petition was dismissed with no explanation. And let's close it out with a segment of The Record with Greta Van Susteren, who is publicly calling out the FBI after years and years of research. Many of you have watched me for years and remember some of the investigations I've done. And I want to bring you the latest on one that I've worked on since June of 2005. That's the year of the month that I arrived in Aruba, and because my hotel room was not ready, I went from the airport to the hotel where Natalie Holloway had been staying before she vanished about 10 days earlier. I knocked on the hotel door, expecting either no answer or perhaps a tourist who had moved into the room. I did not expect what happened. The door opened, and standing before me was Beth Holloway, the mother of the missing child. I instantly saw the pain in her eyes, and if you know any parent who has ever lost a child, you know that look. She invited me in, we talked, and the only way I could even begin to console her was to promise that I would stay in this investigation until the end, when we had all the facts. At the time of the promise, quite frankly, I thought that would be at most a few days. I had no idea it would be years and years. But I've kept my word, and I still am, almost 19 years later. 
As you probably know, last June, Vandersloot was brought to the United States after Beth and I pursued him for years. And then a few months later, in October, Vandersloot pleaded guilty to wire fraud and extortion, not to murder. He was not charged with murder. There is no doubt in my mind that Vandersloot killed Natalie Holloway. But he left out a whole lot of details in his plea, a much darker story about Aruba. But I'm going to leave that for a future date. In the meantime, there is a question of the FBI that needs to be answered. But the FBI doesn't want to answer the question. Here's the question. Why in Aruba in 2010, right after Vandersloot committed the extortion crime in front of the FBI, didn't they arrest him? When he was not arrested, Vandersloot slipped out of Peru from under the FBI noses and committed a second murder. 21-year-old Stephanie Flores. Greta then goes on to give all of the background on the FBI sting, which is long, but ends with this. In February this year, I filed a Freedom of Information request. I believe my requested information, including the expense reports of the agents in Aruba, could shed light on what the FBI was doing after the crime was completed on May 10th to the 14th of May when Euron checked into the hotel in Peru while supposedly under 24-7 surveillance until May 21st when the FBI was saying it had telephone problems. And curiously, since the crime was was still over, they were still collecting evidence. So how did the Department of Justice and the FBI reply to my February FOIA request? Here's a picture of it. First note, the Department of Justice writes that the subject of my request is Yaron Vandersloot. Actually, I was inquiring about the FBI, not Yaron Vandersloot. I wanted to know what the FBI was doing in Aruba long after Yaron had slipped out to kill a second girl. It's not about Vandersloot. Second, the reason the DOJ and FBI declined my FOIA request is because the disclosure of law enforcement records concerning an individual could reasonably be expected to constitute an unwarranted invasion of personal privacy. They must be joking. An unwarranted invasion of personal privacy of your own Vandersloot? The killer's privacy? They were worried about that? And what would it be? Or if by some wild chance they're referring to the agents of those subjects said you're on Vandersloot, how could, among other things, the FBI agents' expense accounts or how they spent taxpayer money in Aruba for at least 11 days be an invasion of their privacy? It's our taxpayer money. It's not their personal money. And besides the money spent, what were they doing in that full week after Yaron slipped and was gone? How could that answer be privacy? And even if there were some names in the documents that I requested that they, could, that they didn't want me to see, they could just black it out. They know how to do that. They redact items all the time in these FOIA requests. But instead, I just got a big no. I didn't even get redacted documents. So what do I think? Naturally, I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious of a cover-up. FBI agent expense accounts. Brilliant. Don't forget, Greta is not only a great journalist, but also an attorney and host of The Record, 6 o'clock Eastern on Newsmax. She has been following that case, as she said back at the beginning, for almost 19 years. All right, so there should be some action on Capitol Hill today with both the Senate and House back on the job. At the White House, there'll be some pomp and circumstance with the arrival of the Japanese Prime Minister. And congratulations to the Yukon Huskies and all of their fans as Yukon becomes the first school since 2007 to repeat as the NCAA Men's Basketball Champions. The Florida Gators were the last ones to do that in the 2006-2007 seasons with Billy Donovan as the head coach. Congratulations to Purdue on a fantastic season as well. Keep up with all of the news all day and night long on Newsmax. It is available on most major cable systems. If you have AT&T, Comcast, uh, Mediacom, Hotwire, Fios, Spectrum, Suddenlink, and many, many others in including Dish and DirecTV, then you have Newsmax. Also, make sure you have Newsmax Plus. If you don't, simply go to NewsmaxPlus.com and get signed up. You can also get a free trial. It includes all of your favorite shows and hosts. I'm Tony Marino. Thank you, as always, for listening to the Newsmax Daily. Continue to share it with your friends and family. And keep on fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere.